What's up guys, Cloakfiend here again and today we're going to be talking about a problem that I think a lot of people have with the Mars Pro but they don't seem to be talking about it much and um, it mostly relates to stuff that's much larger rather than you know smaller stuff where the de the, 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 there's a lot of detail because the problems are these I think it's to do with the LED light matrix or the, the way they're things set apart we're going to take it apart in a minute anyway and have a look what's down there but as you can see there's like a perfect formation grid formation even on the forehead here that just essentially runs throughout the whole object and um yeah you can't see it so much in small prints like i even printed like a ulysses type thing and I, d I don't actually see it so much in that so um i think a lot of people might have this problem but they're just not aware of it but if you're printing large smooth curved surfaces it becomes very apparent very quickly um and uh, yeah, I don't like it at all one bit. It's got nothing to do with the support. It's got nothing to do with the Z screw. It has to only be to do with the LEDs and lights because everything else is a, uh, you know, I've, I've printed stuff like this and you know, the, all the supports are completely different. I've basically put loads of supports so as well supported. Um, as you can see, I've put supports literally all around there. It's completely overdone the supports on the back. Printed it at a slight angle, 45 degrees, everything, and still I've got these lines essentially vertically because I printed it like that. So the lines just go parallel to the whole model. As you can see there, 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 and even on the tip here of the uh, crown. So um, yeah, so we're going to find out what, what what's causing that and can we remedy it. So um, I've got some diffusion gel as well from like 20 years ago I just dug it up it's a bit creased but I'm going to try lay it over the grid and see if that kind of breaks up the uh, sharpness of the LEDs because um, I have a feeling they're they're focused in squares and um, as that focus you know cures your resin the, the the gaps between the squares does not focus as much and therefore leaves these ugly lines throughout your prints now i don't know if every mars user has these lines but as far as i'm concerned you know quite a lot are kind of coming out of the woodwork claiming that they do have them as well so um yeah i'm just going to try and get to the bottom of this and how to remedy it as much as you can i know it's a sub 300 dollar printer and all that but still you know it's a problem that I'm sure there's a, an easy solution to solve it and it, it shouldn't really be having this problem because Mars actually told me that that's just how it is which um, so everyone else telling me well no no I don't have that it shouldn't be like that well Mars themselves told me that's normal surface uh, quality and I was like well if it is that's that's pretty damn terrible if you ask me so I'm going to see how I can improve on, on what Mars just says is the de facto and um, Obviously, I was thinking of getting a Saturn, and like, what, what on earth am I going to get a Saturn for to print even bigger things with even more lines all over them? It just doesn't make any damn sense, if you ask me. So, um, without further ado, let's take the, uh, the Mars Pro apart. I just thought, before we take it apart, I'm going to do an exposure test so you can see exactly what the light is showing. Because if, obviously, you're seeing lines in the light matrix, that's going to get projected onto your resin. Yeah. So, obviously, um... I can see the grid right there. That's what we're, that's what I'm getting on my um, resin. Just want to let you know this screen is not coming out easily, and I think it's going to just crack as soon as I try and pull it out. So um, yeah, it's not as simple as just like a five-minute job. And some people seem to tell me. Just uh, thought I'd let you know that in case you're thinking of trying to swap your screen out. So I'm just going to sit here for another 20 minutes and try and just heat up the the glue, I guess. All right, so. After lots of heating, I'm, I'm finally I finally prized it up, and I can see the the grid pattern inside. Oh, the problem! And let's just see what is on that grid pattern. Has anything leaked on there? I don't think so, to be honest with you. Just gonna look with a UV light to see if I can see any traces of resin, and uh, just don't see any traces of it. I don't see anything that's fallen down or anything at all so no nothing has touched that that matrix so to speak it's perfect it's in it looks quite cool actually but yeah so um as far as i'm concerned there's nothing that is wrong with this printer 
So I've just laid my screen down on top of the diffusion paper and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go around with um, a pen just to get an outline but ideally I, what I wanted to do is put it directly against the lamps on the inside so um, I somehow force this inside like so like that. So this is what I'm going to do first. So um, the problem I'm having is getting rid of this and uh, so this is what I'm having to do. I thought I'd show you me doing it because um, this is the hassle you're going to have to to get rid of this stuff. So this is what I'm having to do. I'm having to constantly go under there. So yeah, I'm, have tr I'm having trouble getting rid of that residue so I'm going to get some acetone and um, try and get rid of it with a cotton bud. It seems to be going much better. Now the way I've kind of prepared the double-sided tape around the edges is I've essentially just laid down a roll of double-sided tape then got um, a metal ruler and sliced a couple of lines across of it, measured about 13.75 centimeters, and then I'm just going to peel them off and then lay them down. Alright, let's see. Oh, looks a bit better. It does look like it's flickering a bit, but it looks a little bit better. I just thought I'd show you that now. I can still see some lines, but um, maybe not as bad as before. So I'm going to actually go ahead and do a test now. Okay, so I've re replaced the glass screen there just to, uh, just to show you that it's actually perfectly clear. I did have some problems at the bottom where I was trying to take the glue off the back of the glass screen and I kind of did smudge it a bit but I'm not too bothered about that um, it was not going to affect my test anyway so um, I'm just going to turn it on now put on the tray and give it a go I have no idea whether the light is now going to be weaker than I need it so um, I'm probably going to have a, a couple more fails but um, I'm just going to see what happens anyway so I'll see you in a bit alright so it's all back together I haven't even done any re-leveling nothing so I'm, I'm hoping it's going to be alright I'm just going to click go. Anyway, so uh, after f after setting it to 20 seconds, I went back and I was like, wicked. Sorted, problem solved, wicked. But then I didn't realize that, you know, diffusion paper acts like an ND filter, essentially. So um, it cuts the light down, which means obviously you're going to need higher exposure times. So not only is the shadow softer, but the lights are also dimmer. So um, I think that's having two negative adverse effects, as I'll show you in a minute. <clears throat> because uh, what that means is that you need to overexpose your item and on top of that the the light that's hitting it is weaker anyway and the shadows are, are weaker so this is the result of the test so as you can see the the only successful part of it is there are no lines there are no lines at all so it's kind of a success and a failure at the same time because the failure part of it is kind of looks weird. It's got this weird shiny effect to it. I don't know this one won't sit down on its own. But if you look at the, if you look at it, it's shiny. This one is not shiny, it's matte. So um, that, I don't know whether that's to do with the fact that it's not quite curing correctly or anything, but it is completely dry to the touch and as far as I'm concerned cured because I've left it out in the sun for like all day. So. Um, as far as I'm concerned, it's all right. There are no lines whatsoever on this one. Um, but yeah, so I'm gonna do some close-ups. I'm gonna show you that one. So I just do a comparison between the regular and the unregular. So that's the regular one with all the lines. So you can see where all the lines are and but also the detail which is gone on the other one so all the detail on the lips and stuff and the bottom which I did change a bit another fixed one so the fixed one looks like this All sorts of weird shit going on there, I don't know what that is. Um, still weird ley line there from something, I don't know where. 
that's the detail so while some detail is still there we've still got something the her eyebrows still look quite cool and uh, I mean her eyes are still you know not completely blurred out like the uh, skull but there is still sharpness as well to the to the bottom so I don't know why this one came out sharper than the skull but at the end of the day maybe I don't know something to do with the size but still her lips have got no um, detail in them compared to these ones which have got subtle sculpted details but it's not the end of the world so I mean this one is still quite cool looking to be honest with you um yeah it's not that bad it's just a little bit less but there you have it so that's what diffusion paper does that was my second part because at the end of the day I thought you know what I thought what will a skull look like and it was a much smaller object I didn't want to slap a 15 hour print on by the way this was 15 hours compared to the 9 hours or 8 hours 30 or something like that so the sacrifice is also time rather than curing for 7 seconds a layer this one was curing for 20 seconds a layer so yeah you know Fair enough if you're doing large stuff and there's no detail in it like circles and stuff but also I got weird bits like horizontal lines here and there so I don't know if it was just not sticking as well and you know there was problems with it adhering to the FEP but either way I was happy that it worked so with the skull I tried that one and I got the same results the skull worked and all that but and no layer lines at all or no vertical layer lines or kind of uh, LED lines as I call them but uh, yeah as you can see the detail is let me zoom into that so yeah there's the skull that's the result of the skull and here I've got kind of I don't know I think I did a pause a couple of times but I have a feeling that I might have got a bit of dirt in when I was doing this whole operation into the Z screw so that's what that is but yeah, there are no like vertical lines running across it at all. But as a result, look at the softness of that. The teeth are soft. The eyes, is, the eyes look really trippy. It's like it's almost like it's like a massive blur. It's like a Gaussian blur over it all, which is an interesting effect in itself. But um, yeah, that's what that looks like. And if I show you an actual skull, then um, yeah, that's what the detail should have been like. Something more like that. So yeah, that's um, what happens. You, you're just gonna lose a lot of definition, basically. So yeah, I just thought I'd share that with you. So there you have it. You have a weird, shiny, line-free, diffused kind of version of this. So, and, an and another thing, actually, what I'd like to add is this. I'll show you that, where is it? There's some weird, like, line on, on the here on the um, the last bits that got done her face is alright and the chin and all that but I think this could be the what in part to do with that with diffusion line I think I think the light could be somehow I don't know reflecting off that back onto the vat then back onto that again because uh, it looks like there's um, I don't know I'll highlight it there you can see it there's a weird like it's not a perfectly straight line but it's like a zigzaggy kind of weird line here that Kind of, I don't know what it is. It's, it's just an anomaly, basically. So um, yeah, you get. I think it's um, a lot of things are happening with this weird 20 second exposure time and the kind of um, diffusion paper because uh, obviously the diffusion paper isn't perfectly flat either, so it's probably doing weird things in itself. Okay, so another problem was that I noticed that obviously you can see the shape of the the base of the model but when I looked at it this way I don't know if you can see it in the light but I'll, I'll try and focus it here without it dripping on the floor actually I don't care if it drips on the floor like here you can see some white marks and stuff now I thought that was the FEP getting pu pushed to, the, to its limits you know like when you fold plastic it goes white but then Let's say I, I try to wipe it off there. Looking from this side, you can also you can also still see it there behind my hand. But then I noticed it got wiped off. So um, it's not the FEP. It's just uh, some kind of 
what I feel it is, it's like refraction hitting parts of the FEP causing the kind of the, the resin to cure in those weird areas. So basically this is round two now. I'm just going to heat up the glass. Okay, so the first time was essentially I just took that off, popped that in there, boom, closed it, slapped it on, and then you, you saw the results. So what I'm going to do now is something a bit different. So I ordered something called um, prismatic diffusion. I went for the polycarbonate because I read that one let through the most light. So the back. You want to be shining the light through the back as opposed to through the front. I'm going to cut this to the exact size of the hole because obviously it's not flexible. It's like it's a solid sheet of plastic. It's kind of that it's that, it's that stuff you see on all the fluorescent bulbs, I think. That's what it reminds me of at school and stuff. So um, I'm just going to cut it to the same size as this hole so I could just chuck it in there the same way I did uh, this plastic here. So I'm just going to measure the gap. It is... 13 and a bit by 7. So luckily this has got some plastic on the back. I don't really have anything to cut that out so I'm just going to use a saw basically. Alright, so I've cut that out. I'm just going to use a bit of a 120 sandpaper to go around the edges. Alright, so basically what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to peel off the back. And this is not sticky by the way, so um, I'm just going to chuck it inside. The flat side down, I'm just going to give a couple of puffs of air in there. Start to heat it up again. I didn't want to go down. Right, that's nice and smooth. All right, let's see what that looks like in uh, the UV test light. Hmm, interesting. I'm not sure how good that. <laughs> I don't know how good that's going to be, is it? All right, I'm going to give it a shot. See what it looks like after all. Got nothing to lose apart from my printer. Yeah, it didn't work as predicted. So I'm going to increase the base to 60, and I'm going to increase the layer light to maybe the layer exposure to about 13. Just getting this weird knocking now. What is that? Just to let you know, yeah, that this one's kind of, even the base layers, as you can see, um, this is weak. So uh, yeah, this one, look, I can even separate it myself. So yeah, um, this diffusion, pr prismatic diffusion thing is no good. Don't have a glove on my other hand, but yeah, look, this thing is just that weak. I can fold it in half. It's just hasn't cured very well at all. So um, I'm just going to abandon it, let it go, and <laughs> just deal with the lines. All right, peace. See you later. So the verdict is that the regular photographic paper is actually much better. It lets in light more evenly and uh, it, just, it just works better. This stuff, kind of on paper, it seems better. It lets in more light, 90% or whatever, but... I think just the nature of it just means it, I don't know, it just doesn't work as well on the machine maybe because it's more dotty rather than a, a solid. So um, I don't know, either way I can't be bothered um, ramping up the times to 20 second again just to get some weird surface most likely. So um, if you're going to try it, you can always try it with this one. Maybe go a couple of shades thinner than this to get, um, because this one's quite opaque. So maybe go a bit more translucent, but that's about it. Hope you enjoy the video. See you later.